Hi everybody, I'm Randy LeBeau, and I'm here to give you some tips on how to use your smartphone to capture some great video. Now you might wonder why is he in this shed instead of inside with his wife and kids? Well, I've got some good reasons. I'm to have a quality Bye. tripod to put cut, hey. cut, cut. <laughs> so you want to use a tripod. Can you please take out the garbage? Yes, dear. Cut. It's a lot quieter in here and a whole lot less chores to do. It's very important to pick a quiet place to do your video recording. And with that in mind, you wanna make sure that your phone is turned on the airplane mode. So if a phone call or a text comes through, it doesn't mess up your perfect video take. All right, I turned off that airplane mode. Now let's turn on the real airplane mode to make sure we don't get interrupted in the middle of recording. To get a steady shot, you're going to need a tripod. Now, there are many different sizes of tripods. There are smaller ones, there are bigger ones. But in all cases, you're going to need a smartphone tripod adapter like this one, about eight bucks, to be able to get your smartphone onto the tripod. Now, a problem that you're going to have when shooting video on a tripod is that if you're given a presentation and you have some hands-on items to show, you have no way of zooming into that. Um, so, what I would suggest is, Say I'm working on some floors in this shed. Uh, here, if I wanted to show the piece here, I'm going to hold it up in front of me so that the camera can see what it looks like. That's the best way to do it. Um, you might think of some other ways, but that's the best way to not interrupt your recording and not be distracted in the middle of your presentation. If instead of using a tripod, you want somebody else to shoot the video, there is a stabilizer built in on an iPhone. Androids, you have to turn it on. But just be careful that the person shoots it very steady. They hold it close to their body to shoot. And if there are any items that are being demonstrated, do not zoom with your fingers. Instead, slowly walk into the object and then gradually come back. No abrupt motions would be the best way to do it. Lighting is an important part of capturing good video. Now, smartphones have very tiny sensors, which means they do poorly in low light situations. That's why it's good to have a light like this LED one, or you can be creative and use like a desk lamp. The important thing is that the light source be in front of you. And whether it's the sun or a light, if it's behind you, you look like you're in the witness protection program. I'm 52 years old, and I love frosted flakes. Good audio is just as important as good video, unless you're doing sign language. If the viewer can't understand what you're saying, they're gonna be very frustrated. Ah, uh, no audio! Problem with a smartphone is, it does not have good audio the farther you get away from it. So you have to have some extension like this clip-on microphone. You can go 10 feet and still get good audio. Before recording video, it's a good idea to delete media you're not using. As far as file size, I would record at HD 720p or 1080p. Now 4K on the other hand, avoid it. They're giant files that will crash your computer. It might seem like a little thing, but getting the correct headroom above a person is, is important. It can be very distracting if there's way too much headroom or if the top of the screen appears to be cutting off a part of the person's head. We want to make it as easy for the viewer to watch you talk as possible. It, the top of the screen is crushing. Me. And they knew that it was much more than a hunch That this group must somehow form a family Is anybody up there? Greg? Marsha? Yes! Headroom is just right! Okay, we have some technical things out of the way. Now let's talk about you as a presenter. What are some ways that you can carry yourself in some ways that you can dress to be more effective in your video presentation. Okay, the first thing is your eyes. You want to make direct contact with the camera as if you're talking to one single person. Some people make the mistake of looking side to side and it's very distracting and it almost looks like someone's being shifty or dishonest or hiding something or that they're really nervous. Just concentrate on having a conversation with the person when you're presenting your content. 
Sunglasses can also be very distracting. People want to see your eyes when you're talking with them, and if your eyes are hidden from view, there could also be a suggestion that there's something shifty or dishonest or sinister going on. I'm Russian. KGB. My pastime is painting. You can trust me. I'm a nice guy. What you wear is also an important part of your video presentation to your smartphone. If you wear the wrong clothes, it can distract from your message. Let's go ahead and start with some don'ts. Exhibit A of what you do not want to wear. Clothes that have lines that are too close together, houndstooth, uh, striped patterns, they tend to moray, which means it makes it look like on TV, on video, that they're moving. And here's another example of that with this, with these lines close together. And look, this, the problem with that is, if those lines appear to be moving and the viewer thinks that they're moving, they're going to go see their eye doctor. And their eye doctor is going to tell them, there's nothing wrong with your eyes. And then they're going to go see a psychiatrist, and that's going to cost them a lot of money, and it's going to be all your fault if you wear clothes that moray. Now that I've got you worried about a guilty conscience, if you wear clothes like this that moray, let's talk about something else you want to avoid. You want to wa avoid white clothes. White is, is the worst color that you can wear because it's very reflective and the camera has the iris down to adjust for its bright reflective nature and it's going to also bring your face down, which is not what you want. So finally, let's get to the shirt, the, the shirt or clothes that you want to wear. There you go. Here's the... No, whoop, what a mistake. <laughs> Obviously, this is too loud and crazy and too groovy. Uh, avoid loud, crazy patterns and once again, there may be some more issues with something like this. Obviously, this is dated. What you do want to wear are typically dark colors, but solid colors. I mean, as long as they're dark enough. Those will look the best on camera. Jewelry can be a problem because it can be a distraction. The sound of jingly jangling necklaces or bracelets can easily be picked up on a very sensitive microphone. Also, the reflective nature of anything metallic tends to almost send out an SOS to the viewer which is very distracting from your very important message, and we don't want to distract from that. Yo, dude, you better not touch my bling. Okay, we're not coming after you, jewelry. It's just a suggestion. Let's talk hats. To wear a hat or not to wear a hat? That's the question. My name, Randy, in Gaelic means shield wolf, and it just so happens one of my children had a hat with a wolf on it, so I said, that's appropriate, let me wear that. Now, other than the impoliteness of a guy wearing a hat indoors, I want to apologize right now for that infraction, there's another reason why you shouldn't wear a hat when you're doing a TV interview. And that reason is that overhead lights can put shadows over your eyes. We call that raccoon eyes. So there you go. You see it kind of darkens the eyes, and we want your eyes to be well seen when you're doing an interview. So if you would ask me the question, can I wear a hat or should I wear a hat, I'd say no. It's going to give you an animal face, wolf or raccoon eyes. So there you have it. Some tips on how to use your smartphone to effectively capture video. Just a word of caution. You don't have to be perfect at this and nobody expects you to be. Just be enthusiastic when you're talking about your content and you will do great. You've got this. Thanks for watching.